It's been a long time since we've had a Grant episode on the channel. I had this vision of the next one being us fitting off all the engine components and taking it for a test drive. However, we've had a bit of an issue with the radiator that we selected, it's completely unusable, and so we're in the process of acquiring a new one. There's not a lot of fabrication going on in this one, but I thought I owed it to you guys to let Daryl and Jesse give you a bit of an update on the progress that they've made in the last couple of weeks. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. In the last Grant episode, we left Daryl as he worked on the turret basket. Since then, he's fitted the traverse mechanism. Well, what we've done, we've, we've set up the uh, turret basket actually in the turret ring and we've fitted the, uh, the, the traverse mechanisms. It looks like it all moves nice and free. So you can see the outer ring moving around. We had an original seat, we just had to make a, uh, like a pedestal mount. What about this one over here? The other side. We just leave them off now so we can, when we paint this, you know, we can get in behind everywhere. The next thing for the turret bar, so we're actually fitting it in the tank just to confirm everything works. Just, just dropping it in? Just dropping it in and basically just fiddly things, jazzing it up a bit, you know. See if I can talk the boss into buying, you know, a couple of hundred rounds of ammo and we'll stick it in. Could we cast some out of resin maybe? Well, that's, that's what we're thinking of going through with, make a uh, resin cast type and, and that way we can have the full rack displayed for when people are in it having a ride. I reckon, yeah, we, we absolutely have to do that. I'll have a word to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Jess has been busy adapting the engine to fit properly. We fitted the uh, motor to our engine mounts, which were all welded in. Um, before I did that, I actually painted all the inside of the vehicle. Um, and then we pretty much started getting ready to get the vehicle you know, to run in condition. That's an aluminium fuel tank. Generally, we do all of our fuel tanks are aluminium. E easier to work with and uh, less chance of it rusting or anything like that if we leave fuel in it for a long time. On the motor, the original turbo mount, it protrudes out through the decks of this tank. The turbo would have sat about here, up in the air, which was way too high. So we've had to cut the original mount off and I've made a new mount on the bottom here and bent a new piece up and just pretty much lowered it in and, and bit like twisted it in on an angle a little bit. We're close, but yeah, it was there wasn't a lot of room to work with. It should fit once we've... Uh, got everything fitted and everything, it, it should be perfect. So after we did the turbo and, and mounted it and where, where we want it, we had to redo the exhaust coming off the manifolds of the engine. So the original ones we obviously couldn't use because they're in the wrong spot. So I've just refabricated some new ones. We've just pretty much cut them and modified them, made them suit, coming through the back. There's not a lot of room, but just along here. So the yeah. firewall comes just here. Okay. It shouldn't be a problem. Ryan was able to source the, the appropriate air cleaner for this and um, this was very simple. It was just a matter of literally just putting it on the turbo and just clamping it on. It was also the easiest and most cost effective way of mounting it. I talked to Ryan. Ryan gave me the appropriate batteries that he wanted to use for our electronic system on this. So he gave me the size pretty much of what he wanted. Same thing. We're doing two batteries in there. Um, so I allowed enough room for two batteries. It's just a simple um, system where you just pull, pull that out, put your batteries in push that over the top and then you just clamp it up with these um, wing nuts. Yep, pretty and straightforward. It, pretty straightforward and it holds it all in. We also made the battery rack system also removable, so if there ever is a spill or anything, you just pull the whole entire system out, clean it all up and then put it back in. We had to source some parts from our local exhaust shop and a few of the parts we had to get from down south. But this first part, it pretty much is a five inch um, reducer that comes out of the turbo, reduces down to three inch and then it was just a simple 90 degree bend and then a straight down onto like I had a little bit of an angle change so I had to do an angle change in here and then straight onto a 90 so if it's all solid mounted if the motor you know talks and, and twists and turns there's a chance that it could you know crack a weld or you know bend somewhere so we'll put a flexible fitting in here just in the middle to stop that from, from happening. Exhaust comes out of the turbo, comes around, wraps around, and then bolts onto this here. Our, um, our exhaust muffler, the originally the, there would have been two pipes going into either one. So because of that, um, we've only got the one pipe. I've had to make this bit of a T-piece contraption. So we have uh, exhaust fumes going into both sides so it doesn't look a bit strange. Um, because if it was driving around, you'd only have exhaust fumes coming out of one side, so 
Um, that's the, that, that's a good attention to detail there. Yeah, so they don't really make them, so I've had to modify and make my own. Because this is fixed on and solid, there's going to be no flexibility. So you can find the, ne like the, the, the closest weak point and crack one of the welds. So we don't want that happening. That's why I want to put a flexible uh, exhaust fitting. So these are the original covers off the muffler. Um, as you can see, they would be on repair. Come on, mate, you could have done You could have done it. If anyone could do it, you could. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, to get pipe like this... Yeah. Like... We, we, could, have, we could have sourced um, some, uh, like, sheet metal and got them rolled, but, we, like I said, we don't have that equipment to roll it here. Yeah. We had an abundance of line pipe from previous jobs, which actually ended up being the perfect size. Yeah. Um, and we had the pipe caps in stock also, so it was much easier for us just to do that than, you know outsource work and have to wait weeks on the inside of them they've got like a uh, like a baffle so i've mounted the original baffle that was in them the cast piece is original um so we've like cleaned it up fixed it up and and remounted that and then put our new pieces on it uh, so this is the alternator for our vehicle and i just made uh the swing bracket for the alternator if you undo this that's what allows it to pivot so you can get the belts on and off and also tension them while Jesse took a few weeks of hard-earned annual leave, Daryl got to work on the fighting compartment. I started fitting out some of the internal components. We've had to make up new bulkheads to, to match the shape of the transmission. What's a bulkhead? Oh, basically a uh, divider between the fighting compartment and the engine compartment. So, and we have to be able to make them removable. So basically we just made something like this up, bolts onto the existing area, and that, that just separates the two areas. Internals were gutted, there was nothing in here basically. But they had the marks on the walls where things had been. So from them, we can work out the points where the original fittings went. So basically, we're, we're trying to, within the limitations of the new transmission and the size of the drive line, we're trying to recreate as best as possible the, an original interior. That goes above where the 75 millimetre ammunition storage racks are. But we can't fit them in because of the transmission is a bit too big. So, so what we're, we're doing is just recreating the same shape, size, and then taking a bit out where the, uh, where the transmission is. So the, this is the guard to stop people's arms getting Yeah, yeah just, just a safety guard inside the, 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 for the turret basket. Block there. Which block? That, oh, that block. one. That's yeah. a mounting point for that guard that we just showed you. Okay. Hey, could, could you show me how it goes on? Yeah. Like, Basically goes in there and then the that guard that we're talking about, a bracket that comes off and then it starts curving around, another bracket here, and then comes around and mounts there. Yeah, right. The turret okay. basket hopefully fits down neatly in between it. But it's, it, it, because it's got all these original mounting points, original checker, it's going to look good for the inside. This is just a, like a mini strengthening bulkhead, otherwise you'll get a bit of flexibility in the hull. Okay. So this is a, a bit of a bulkhead as well, but it's removable. All the bolts are removable. These angles are original. Okay. And, and in the original spot. We had the welds up here that showed us the exact point, their length of that. Plus we could gauge it off this, this other panel. And then the points on the bottom gave us reference points as well. We had some parts of the frame, but we had to make up other bits. So the, the upper, upper part's original. But most of the white lower bit, you can see we had to join in a bit there and, and there. We, we just had bits and pieces off broken seats, so we're just uh, manufacturing them. Well, the other thing we've been working on is the uh, mudguard. That we had one semi-complete mudguard that had been damaged and cut off here. And we had another part that we rescued from a hulk up the farm. So what we've done is we've, we've joined the two together. You can see, see the weld line under there. We straightened them out, they're a bit bent and they're twisted. Still a bit more work to do down here put in a piece of welding uh, material there, weld that in. But other than that, it's pretty good. We're missing a lot of the, the, the brackets and fittings of that, but we're luckily we've got a friend uh, who also restores tanks here in Australia, and he's had recreated some of these other fittings that we don't have, either the headlight mounts. He's got, had them cast in aluminium. Cast in aluminium? Yeah, cast in aluminium. So, yeah, quite handy, huh? So the, the, the mould would have been off an original? Yeah, mould off an original. So he's had some cast and he's uh, good enough to share them with us. So they come as a blank, like no holes drilled them, just a rough cast. So we have to uh, drill the holes in them, 
etc. Make up little brackets. We can't get lights for a Grant tank. So what most people run is a Jeep headlight, basically the same size. So what, look... what's a Jeep headlight? Oh, just just a standard headlight for a Jeep. Oh, just a Jeep. A Jeep. Sorry, yeah. a yeah. Jeep headlight. Yeah. Similar? Yeah, yeah, similar size and that. So we'll just basically modify one of them to fit on this bracket. It gets mounted here. The good thing about this is it's got all the original mounting points. We didn't have much of this. No, the only part of this we had is the bit down the side here. You can see that shape there. I've painted this one, so it's a bit pretty hard to tell, but that, okay. that was the original bit. So we had to make the rest. We had to make this support arm and make the rest of this up. Bend a pipe to the shape, cut it in half, and then, then welded it on and just ground it off filled it in a bit. In case the tank was damaged or they had to get out of the tank and defend themselves, they could take the uh, 30 cal out of the turret and then mount it on a uh, tripod. And and it, and it was fixed here? Like... Yeah, yeah, well, the, well there's, there's the original mounting point there already. It's, it's one of them, just we'll, we'll play around and just straighten it up a bit. We're just going to position that, get them the right point, and drill some holes and bolt it down. And then that, that just finishes off the final detail on the mud guards. These are the platforms that the driver actually uh, put their feet on. So they sit in the seat and it's over the gearbox. And on either side of the motor, you've got these big tall platforms that they put their feet on. So the tillers are incorporated into these platforms and also uh, the clutch and the accelerator. We won't be using a clutch for our one because we've got an automatic transmission. This was a blown up one that I've had to repair pretty much from, from scratch. All we had um, was this lower half and a bit of this side. So I've had to add in all the top, all the side um, and a few bits here and there. And then we found a bunch of intact ones, didn't we? Yeah, we did, um, which was a bit of a pain because <laughs> you, know, you spend you know, a few days working on something and then you find the original stuff. Which one did Jess make? Oh no! Emmy, do you want? Well, they're the same. Jess is going to be so mad. <laughs> when he gets up here, I said, Hey, Jess, I've got a present for you. Yeah, 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 that's a good one. There you go, mate. Don't say anything, nothing. Yeah, but is that the right one? Hold on. Yep. Is that the driver or is that the other side? No, that's the other side. Oh, but wait. Have you got the other one? There's more. Yeah, that's the right one. <laughs> is that the opposite? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Well, if you're not happy with that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, wasn't a big deal. We've, we're still using this piece just because we've spent so much time on it already. Like Ryan spent, you know, half a day pulling it all apart and like re-putting it all back together. And once it's all in the vehicle, we can show you how they all work exactly. So did you make all this? Yeah, so I've had to make all this from scratch pretty much. And we didn't really have many reference points to go off. Uh, the pieces that we did have, they were all broken off. Everything's been made on a lathe. Uh, flat pieces of plate have been pressed. Oxy cut. I've done a little bit of everything on this, but essentially I started off uh, by getting rough me measurements of what I what I needed and what I wanted, um, and then I've had to turn internal parts on the lathe. So these three bits are all separate uh, parts that I've turned. One of them's threaded, so these two bits here are threaded. So the bolt goes through and allows it to twist. This is another one. Have you done any work on this one yet? Uh, I have actually had to repair it, but this one here uh, on the left hand side uh, originally has the clutch pedal and we're not actually doing a clutch. Oh yeah. Use. So really the only thing that's been done to it is the same thing. Ryan pulled it apart and got the linkages working for the, um, the brake tillers. Yep. Um, that was pretty much it. I just had to clean up a few holes. There was a few patches and stuff like that, but that one was pretty simple. Pretty easy to fix up. It's just going to get worse and worse, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to get any easier. No. Yeah, that goes like that. And I'll just put one bolt in. Or two. Two bolts, I'm going to say. So this is just bolted down to the floor. 
we're using the original holes. Lucky that they're still there. That just sits in there and it bolts down to the floor. And then pretty much how it works is the driver gets in. Uh, oh man. Wait, he straddles the transmission? Yeah, so this is how they sit. Not a lot of room, not a lot of fun. That is nuts. Extremely hot, so this is what they look out of. So, generally, in, not in combat, this would be up and out of the way. And then in combat, they look through their periscope, which is just here. Yeah, tiny slit. Tiny little, yeah, tiny little hole to look out of. But yeah. yeah, this is what they would have been sitting on. And it would have been extremely hot sitting on the gearbox like this. Oh man, I can imagine. So, but they're hunched over. These are their tillers. Driving. To drive. Yeah. Uh, clutch on one side originally, and then accelerator pedal on, pedal on the other, like that. Yeah. So. Gosh, that is not a lot of room. The handbrake. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And this is the gear lever on the manual transmission. Uh, like once we get the automatic gearbox all set up, we're happy with everything. We'll have to do two uh, two handles, so there'll be one for the manual to select the manual gearbox and then one for the automatic transmission. So, you know, drive, neutral, reverse, and that for the automatic transmission. So there'll be two yeah. behind each other like that to drive it. Uh, we've got a cluster here. And I think it... Are we using the original one? Yeah, yeah. So really? We've, we've, we've got the original cluster. Um, we're probably not going to use... There's about there's about 12 or 14 gauges. I actually think it's out of a radial too. Okay. So the radials compared to the two twin D, uh, diesels was different, the clusters. We've yeah. only got the radial cluster, so we're going to be using that. It is slightly different, slightly, you know, not the right one, but... Yeah. Doesn't matter. But yeah, so the cluster will be mounted here and we'll have, you know, our standard gauges, water temperature, you know, just, like just, just the standard stuff that we put in majority of our tanks. But yeah, that will be mounted here, so pretty much. Just for the viewers at home, a, clus a cluster is basically all your gauges for your engine and yeah. everything. Uh, same as a car. It's it's where your speedo is. Yeah, yeah. Your, your and it's temperature. called a cluster. Yeah. I had yeah, no idea about that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so now we'll have to run the linkages to the motor. So what I'll be doing is pretty much working out to go from across here, underneath the floor, underneath this bulkhead, all the way down the back through the firewall, across the mount, and then we need to go up and then across onto the engine. So originally, these uh, the linkages on both these sides, they came out and they went down and across and they ran through a, this tunnel here. So this was all enclosed and the two linkages on either side ran through here. So we've actually got the original linkages. Oh really? Outside, but we're not going to use them because... Well, they're not configured for our they're not, setup. No, they're not configured for our motor, our transmission. They're not really, they're not in the right place pretty much. It's too hard to use them because then we'd have to go around other things and we'd be doing bends where we don't need to. Yeah, so yeah, we're not yeah. going to use them but we can show you the original uh, linkages and how they worked. Yep. This is the original uh, linkages that ran through the center of the floor. Okay. So this one here was probably for the clutch and this one over here would have been for the accelerator pedal. So see those, this linkage here when you pull, push, push down on the accelerator pedal that would have pulled across, which moved this back and forth. So this is mounted behind where the driver sits? Yes, correct. Okay. Underneath, pretty much underneath where they sit, under the uh, gearbox. Are yes. we going to be able to use this? No. No, no not okay. really, not really. Like I said, it's it's not in the right position and it'd be too hard to use it. Yeah, um, fair enough. But yeah, so yeah, one would have been clutch. I'm assuming this one probably would have been the clutch and then this one would have been the accelerator. We're getting to the, the stage of the build where we're, you know, we're not hurrying, but we're, we're trying to get stuff uh, finished off and you know, pu push through. We've got, a, we've got more projects to come. That's exactly it. So, <laughs> yeah. That's all we have time for today. Join us on the next Grant episode in a few weeks' time as we follow Daryl as he restores these shell racks from start to finish. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.